Hello everybody, this is Ronar, and today we're going to be continuing our Long War 2 over-explained series. So for today, we are going to be explaining damage calculation, specifically hit and crit chance calculation, as well as graze calculation. Now before we go into that, let's start with um, XCOM 1 calculation. So for XCOM 1 calculation, it was pretty straightforward. Let's imagine a bar over here from 0 to 100, and I'll be explaining everything here on MS Paint instead of the in-game thing because it's a little bit easier to visualize. Now let's say you have a 50% chance to hit, so 50% hit and 50% crit. How would this be reflected in XCOM 1, 2, and Long War 2? In XCOM 1 as well as Long War 1, um, this is pretty straightforward. So you'd be rolling a number anywhere between 0 to 100 with the RNG, and how it would work is at the 50% mark, or at the 50 mark, if you roll a 50 or below, you would hit. And if you rolled any higher, you would miss. So let's highlight these with gray and red to really highlight these um, chances. So red is hit, gray is miss. So over here, you would have a 50% chance of hitting. Now out of this hit, how much of this would be crit? Well, half of this. So 50% of the hit, so over here, up to the 50% mark, let's use yellow to highlight crit. So up to here at the 25% mark, you would crit. So if you rolled from 0 to 25, you would crit. From 25 to 50, you would regular hit. And from 50 to 100, you would miss. So that's pretty straightforward. But what about in XCOM 2? Not Long War 2, but just XCOM 2. Well, that's a little bit different. In XCOM 2, the hit chance is still calculated the same way. But this is where things get a little bit tricky, and something that newer players to XCOM 2 may not know, and maybe even some uh, veteran players, some veteran players don't actually know this, but 50% crit is calculated in independently from a uh, hit chance in XCOM 2. So how this works is, at the 50% mark, you would also have a 50% chance to crit. So imagine the game rolling the number now. Anywhere between 0 to 50 would actually be a crit. The crit overrides the hit chance. So that means from 0 to 50, you have a chance to crit. And from 50 to 100, you would have the uh, chance to miss, which means 50% crit is actually, um, in XCOM 1 terms, 100% crit depending on what your hit chance is. So basically, crit chance, if you were to look at things in the XCOM 1 percentage chances, um, the crit chance would actually be dynamic dependent on your hit chance. So for example, if you have um, 25% chance to crit, let's say, so let's say it's 25% chance to crit, then your crit chance would no longer be the entirety of this bar, but it would instead be half of this bar. Uh, oops, there we go. So it'd be about half this bar at the 25 mark. And that, um, that doesn't really make sense for people who've played XCOM 1, because it's like, wait, shouldn't that mean you have like 25% of the 50%? But no, it's 25% chance total. You would just roll the die or roll the D100, and you would see, oh, I got a um, 0 to 25, then I crit. If I roll anything else, then I, um, then I hit regularly, and anything beyond that, we miss. So that's a little bit more unintuitive, but... Um, this actually makes the game a little bit different in terms of crit calculation. So for example, um, the classic example that I always pull up is Stun Lancers actually. So let's go back for a bit. Let's um, clear this all out. Now Stun Lancers are something that this, this is to explain why some people might have a skewed perception on how percentages work in XCOM 2. So a Stun Lancer has 65 accuracy. They don't get range bonuses from their melee attacks, so it's just 65% chance to hit. And they have a 15% chance to crit, which is actually very high. That's like 1 in 6.5 attacks that they make, they'll crit. Um, but let's say around at the 65 mark, this is going to be mischance up here. Right up here is mischance, and everything back here is hit chance, so let's color this red. Okay, now a lot of times people will think of flashbangs as the solution for stun lancers, and it kind of is, right? A flashbang is going to prevent them from um, prevent them from melee attacking you, so that's nice. But what are the um, drawbacks of using a flashbang on a stun lancer? Well, not really a drawback, but what doesn't it prevent? Well, let's mark this as the 15 mark. At the 15 mark, this is crit chance. So let's say you're behind cover. So if you're behind cover, then suddenly you have, let's say, um. Let's say you have half cover. So if you have half cover, I think this will be, illustrate our example a little bit easier. 
And at the 45 mark, they'll hit you. And if you roll from 0 to 15, they'll crit you. And from over here, you will have... Let's delete this really quick. So from over here, you'll have the miss chance over here. Let's set up the miss chance. Just like that. Over here, you have the miss chance. So right now, if you're behind half cover, and they're shooting at you, this will happen, but of course stun lancers always melee attack if they have the option. So let's say you flashbang them, so if you flashbang them further, then their hit chance goes even down further. Um, their hit chance is now 25, I think. The flashbang is 20, yeah, flashbang is 20, so now... This is all mischance. And as you guys can see, as you start decreasing their accuracy, their crit chance doesn't actually go down. So basically you're penalizing the normal hit chance, the normal hit chance over here, like um, this spot over here. Everything from here to here is being penalized, but the crit chance doesn't get penalized. So in terms of XCOM 1 display percentages, at first it would say 65% to hit, and out of that 65%, 15% of it is to crit. And if we whip out a calculator, that would basically mean... 15 divided by 65, that would mean at base they would have a 23% crit chance. But as you decrease their accuracy more, down to um, their 25% uh, chance to hit, uh, then you would have 15% crit divided by the 25. And that would actually now suddenly become a 60% crit chance. So people have this perception that by using a flashbang on the stun lancers, they're actually getting increased chances to crit, but that's not actually what's going on. What's going on is that you're penalizing the regular hit chances, so if they do hit you, there's a very high chance that they'll crit. But in this, in that sense, their actual crit chance is still staying at 15, so they're not actually like gaining crit chance, that's not how it works, but um, uh, how people perceive the RNG is, th is just how they perceive it. They think that they're increasing their crit chances, but that's just um, the XCOM 1 perceived crit chance. Now that we understand XCOM 2, let's go jump into Long War 2, which is probably what you guys are here for. So how does Long War 2 hit chances work? Hit crit chance, that's all gonna be very different. Uh, it's probably easier if I just delete everything and start anew. So let's redraw the bar. This is the 0 to 100 rule. Let's say you have a 50% chance to hit and a 50% chance to crit. And these are going to be the default values. Actually, on a flank, it's like 40%. Maybe we'll calculate it using uh, more realistic numbers. Let's, let's use more realistic numbers. So let's say you have a rookie with exactly 65 accuracy, all right? So you have 65 hit and 40% crit because you're flanking your target. Now, in Long War 2, there is a mechanic called the Graze Band, and by default it is 10%, so we're going to be um we're gonna be using the 10% number as as the default. You can adjust it yourself, but I like to use the default numbers because that's just how the devs intended it to be done, and I think it's better to play the game that way. So what the graze band means, a 10% graze band means 10% above the hit chance, so at 65, you add 10%, so at 75 here over here, and you would also subtract 10%, so at 55. So from 55 to 75, you actually have a chance to graze, which essentially divides the damage by 2 and rounds down. So if you have an assault rifle that does 3 to 5 damage, uh, let's say an assault rifle that does three, four, or five damage. If you graze, that means you'll do 1.5 rounded down, one, two, or uh, 2.5 rounded down, two damage. So you can either deal three to five damage, or if you graze, you'll do one to two damage. So that should be your expected damage when you take shots like that. Um, but now that you guys know how graze works, the remaining chance to true hit is actually the red. So it's a little bit more difficult for enemies as well as your own unit to be able to um, outright kill a unit, but it's a lot easier to deal damage because you actually have a 10% extra chance to just chip down the enemies. So that's kind of how Long War 2's um, combat will be more like. It's better for um, shootout combat, but incidentally, because the timer is shootout combat is actually bad. So this is actually kind of a buff for the enemies in a sense. It's, it's better for the enemies and it's worse for the player, but it's just a challenge that you have to overcome as a commander. 
Now, these are the hit chances. Now, what if we add in crit chance? How will crit chance be factored into this? Well, it's good to see that crit chance will be calculated using the XCOM 1 calculation. So, there's that, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So first you would take the true hit chance, the red bar, and apply the 40 crit to that. So let's whip out our calculator again. So from 0 to 55, so you got a 55% chance. Well, you would basically do 55 times 0.4. That means your crit chance on the regular hit is actually 22, so let's draw that in. We'll draw it from over here to make it a little bit easier to visualize, but basically... Um, actually, no, it's a little bit easier to visualize from down here. So from over here, you will have at the 22 mark your crit chance. So this is a 22% chance to crit, and then um, from 22, so a 33% chance to regular hit, 22% chance to crit. Well, how does it interact with the graze band? Does it just ignore it? It does not actually. So what you would actually do is you would take your calculator again. So the graze band is 20. It's a 20% chance to graze. You would take the 20, multiply it by 0.4, and you would have 8. So does that mean you're critting with that 8? Well, if you roll a, um, a crit while grazing, they negate each other and they become a regular hit. So what ends up happening is the crit and the graze negate each other, and you create a little bit more red in the spot. And what will happen is you get about 8% more. So 60, uh, 55 plus 8, that becomes 63. So at the 63 mark, which we will draw in right now, 63, this is your actual chance to regular hit. So from 22 to 63, that is a uh, 41. So this shot would break down into a 41% chance to regular hit, a 22% chance to crit, and um, 75 minus 63, that is, hold on, I can do mental math, I swear, 12% chance to uh, graze. Let me just make sure I did that right. Yes, okay, so basically this is how your hit chance would break down. And um, from 75 to 100 is miss, so I guess we would add in 25% chance to miss. It's a little bit unintuitive in that sense. Well, no, it's actually very intuitive, it's just hard to calculate it. And as a player trying to get better at Long War 2, you're not gonna like sit there on every single shot and like look at your numbers and try to calculate it. You'll download mods to help you um, get the proper display chance. And I will warn you guys, in Long War the Chosen, as I've been playing, I've noticed that um, the... What's it called? It's not perfect information. The extended information mod. The mod that raises up the enemy and player hit chances as they take their shots. Like the little bar will float over top showing the graze, crit, and hit chance. That's off. For some reason it doesn't calculate the graze band properly. So don't completely listen to that. If the enemy hits you with the 3%, it's not because the enemy actually hits you with the 3%. They probably had like a 20 or 10% chance to crit or something like that. Um, it just doesn't calculate it properly, but... Now you guys know how to calculate it properly. There is a mod, I think it's built into the Long War of the Chosen mod, but I think you have to install it for Long War 2, that properly displays your crit, graze, and hit chances when um, aiming at your opponent. So I highly recommend having that installed if you're playing Long War 2, and I think it's by default installed in Long War of the Chosen. But um, you're not going to really have to calculate this out yourself. It's just important that you guys understand how it works. If you guys are like new to Long War 2 and you start playing, you'll notice like, Wait, why is there like a graze chance even though these types of enemies shouldn't have dodge? Isn't that like a thing exclusive to Vipers in vanilla XCOM? And it is. In the Long War 2, it involves it though. And basically, as I said before, this makes it so that shootouts are technically slightly better than they were before in XCOM 1, but because of a timer for the player, it's technically worse for the player to be in a shootout. And um, in general, I think... Um, it's good for getting chip damage off. Things that are low on HP are more likely to die as you um, continue to shoot at them. Things that are at full HP are less likely to get straight up one shot. So in that sense, it's good for the player that you don't just get straight up one shot. Even when the enemies flank you, there's actually a slight penalty on the... Um, um, when you're flanking a unit, there's still a chance to graze, which can be frustrating. When I first started playing, it was one of those things where I was like, oh man, I'm flanking this guy and I graze instead of actually just critting. But um, the Graze Band overall is a interesting mechanic, and I think it's actually a positive impact on the game. It does make the game a little bit harder on timed missions, but this is one of those things which it would have been really good for XCOM 1 in 
and the Long War one, especially because there was a lot of uh, shootouts and stuff. And it's a mechanic that I hope would end up being seen, maybe being ported over as a mod for XCOM 3. For Axis probably won't incorporate it for XCOM 3, but I think it's a good mechanic overall. And um, you can think of Dodge and Graze as kind of an opposing force to Crit Chance. Instead of um, just rolling against each other, they kind of like downgrade and upgrade the damage. So like if you regular hit and crit, you'll upgrade that. If you um, uh, Similarly, if you roll a dodge while you're also rolling a graze, that'll actually uh, downgrade that shot into a miss. <laughs> That's something to keep in mind. I've actually missed a 100% accurate shot. I think it was um, this one time I was shooting with a sniper on a snake on a flank except I was also disoriented or poisoned or something but I had like a lot of aim buffs on my sniper so it ended up being like a bunch of graze chance and then the enemy dodged my um I great I rolled a graze and I and he probably dodged my attack because he had a lot of dodge as a snake unit I think I was shooting at a sidewinder at the time and basically the game displayed it as a 100% chance to hit but <laughs> because of um graze and Grease and dodge, I actually missed that shot and it was kind of funny, but something to keep in mind. So if you ever see like a 100, the game treats a shot that's like 65% as a 75%, but your actual damage amount won't be as much as like a 75% shot as you might think. And that's that, it's a short video. Um, after this one, I think we're gonna be doing some more talk about the things that truly matter in Long War 2, such as um, such as uh, classes over-explained. So I'll be over-explaining every single class, the Shinobi class, Grenadier, Gunner, Technical, Specialist, everything else. And I'll be telling you guys about what classes are good, what classes, um, I personally think all the classes are usable. There are some classes that are better than others, especially for different parts of the game, and it's important that players start using more things like shinobis, assaults, and technicals. Those are like the three um, very important classes, and it'll help your game out a lot by just taking more of these classes. You don't even need to like play better than you were before. Just taking a better team composition will generally just make your team a lot stronger. And I think a lot of the frustrations that people have with Long War 2 is that they kind of take teams of people that shoot a lot of things, like a lot of snipers, gunners, rangers, on timed missions, which are generally not as good. So I'll be going over all of that, my personal preference and perk selection and all that stuff, and hopefully you guys will enjoy that video too. Thanks for watching though, you guys. Till next time, bye bye Don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching.